everybody. What I'm going to talk a little bit about butterflies in general in the park, but more particularly about the kinds that you can see now, in, if you're lucky. Um, in, in general, o over the years, over really since the year 2000, we, we've recorded 30 different kinds of butterfly in the park, which is about half of all the butterflies that you find in the UK, which is in fact very, very impressive for a, a site in the middle of the city. Um, of, of those 30, two of them have only been seen once by me, and as far as I know, not by anybody else. One's called the large tortoiseshell and the other is called the long-tailed blue. Any of you knows your butterflies. They're both in the extremely rare category, but they don't, they don't live in the park. They're, they're regarded as very rare migrants to Britain, you know, but if you're, if you're around looking in any particular place, a great deal you know you will come across things like this occasionally so so two of our 30 we've just seen once and we may never see again um and there's six others we've got that we've seen less than 10 times in total over 20 years although they may well m most of them are, at least four of them are probably living and breeding in the park but things are sometimes very elusive and present in very especially if there aren't many of them but um in in nineteen in two thousand and nineteen, we we had more kinds than we've ever had before recorded. Uh, twenty five that beat the previous previous was twenty three, I think. But and in in an average year, we get about twenty two different kinds. Mo mostly, there's a regular there's a regular list that we can absolutely rely on of about twenty, you know. And then the others, well, sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't. Um, what we do. What, we, we participate in the National Butterfly Recording Scheme, which is run by Butterfly Conservation. Now, the way this works is that you set up a fixed route through your site and, and you divide it into sections and we do that in the park and we've got 12 sections and you, and this is, this is called a transect because you're following a definite route each time. And you do this between April and September, not at other times of the year because there's not much to be seen. You do it between April and September once a week, whenever you can. Sometimes you're prevented by circumstances or there simply isn't any weather when any butterflies will fly because you don't do it. You, you, you can only do it when butterflies are going to be out. If you go around on a wet day and say, well, oh, there you go, here's my report. I saw no butterflies. That's not a lot of use. Um, so the, the, um, at the moment, trans transects are not happening because butterfly conservation can't tell people to go out and count butterflies because it contravenes, you know, contravenes the current state of affairs. So they'll, who knows when they'll restart. So nobody's recording butterflies at the moment, um, except you can still keep your eyes open when you are out. But what happens when, when you take a, when, when you do this systematically, first of all, you build up a picture of what, what's changed from year to year, either, either as sort of fluctuations or as long-term changes on, on your own site. And what butterfly conservation does is put the whole, all of the results together, just like they do for bird surveys, to try to build up a, a kind of over, build up overall pictures of what's happening so that you can turn around and say, such and such a bird or butterfly has declined by so many percent. That might not be completely accurate, but if you just ask people, somebody will say, "Well, I've seen plenty," you know. And someone else, and so they can't be they can't be declining, but that that's very subjective. Anyway, um, so that's how I I, I do this transect, and um, in 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 future, I'm sort of looking to try to find other people who might. Um, help with it, perhaps even eventually take it over, but um, that's not something that's on hold for the moment. Um, at, at this time, at the end of April, there's about 11 different kinds you can regularly see in the park. A few others you just might see very occasionally. Um, you can ask why, why is it, why is it that some butterflies are out at some times of year and some are out at other times of year? And the, well, the answer is, you know, it's, it's not arbitrary. 
because the butterfly is the end is both the end point and the and the beginning point of a four stage life cycle egg caterpillar pupa and butterfly um so the butterflies that you see early in the year are all kinds which have either spent the winter sleeping as a as an adult butterfly but um or they spent the winter as a as a pupa and they're ready to ready to hatch when the spring comes and and come out if they've spent the winter as an egg an egg or a caterpillar they've got unfinished business to do in the spring when they wake up they've got a you know so you don't see them until later so the so the ones we see all have all been grown-ups or caterpillars i'm going to move on to the first butterfly i'm going to talk about and i'll talk about it for longer than any of the others we've got a that's a good picture we've got we've got a brimstone and we've got actually not not only the cat not only the butterfly but we've got the caterpillar and the chrysalis which is great um the the um we'll talk about the butterfly first now brim, brimstones they're one of the ones that sleep the winter as as a grown-up butterfly i think once a couple of years ago i chanced I a chance to find one and I showed that to Michelle. Oddly enough, it wasn't where they usually hibernate, it was down in a tuft of grass. But usually a brimstone hibernates in an ivy bush or a holly. And when you look at it, you can see, well, look, it's shaped like a leaf, isn't it? And, and you can see veining on the wings that's very prominent and looks like a leaf. And you can even see a couple of spots which can make it look like a leaf with a little bit of damage like something's eaten a little hole in it and it's gone brown so the, br the brimstone and the shape of the wing is leaf-like so that the, the brimstone is adapted to sleep in that kind of place um this this brimstone i think is probably a female um when when they're on a flower, you can't you can never get a picture of them with their wings open because they never have their wings open when they're on a flower. Some other kinds of butterflies do have them open, but the brimstone is one of those that never has its wings open when it's when it's resting. But um, the the, um, the 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 male brimstone is is yellow, and I'd be very surprised if anyone who, who's done any walking in the park lately hasn't. Um, hasn't seen one because they fly quite high and they fly right you know they fly quite long distances and you you see a lot of them but the, the male is yellow and the female is a sort of greenish as you can see a kind of greenish white so in in some butterflies the male and females look females. fairly different and in others they look pretty much the same so that's that's a brimstone now the what what what, are brims, what brimstones do when when they wake up um they fly around and they've probably got a first the first priority is probably to find find some food find some nectar because they spent the winter sleeping and even when you hibernate you do any animal that hibernates does use some energy while it's asleep so they've got to make that up so nectaring would be the first job now they're like a lot of different kinds of flowers. You often see them on primroses and bluebells, which is very attractive. Um, now, and then they, then the males, the males' interest turns to the opposite sex, and they're looking for females. They want to mate. Um, the females are ready to mate as well. In in the summer, when, when before they go to sleep in the autumn they are not interested in mating and they don't mate they're generally not they're physiologically not not ready um so that they they mate only in the spring and and when they um when they've mated then the female the, the male's business is to see if he can mate again with someone else the female's business is to lay eggs and she lays eggs only on two plants which are both two kinds of buckthorn purging buckthorn and alder buckthorn and she'll lay an egg right on right on the tip of one of the very youngest and tenderest leaves on on the bush Buck, buckthorns are both bushes and those um those eggs hatch out in a week or two 
and they turn into a little green caterpillar which lies along the middle of the leaf like this one in the picture and they're very well hidden when that when they're when they're there which uh, is just as well because there are birds everywhere looking for looking for um looking for things like them to feed their young and um they uh, well a lot of them will be found because what one of the things about butterflies is they lay a lot of eggs and that varies quite substantially from one one kind to another but it can be anywhere between perhaps a hundred and five or six hundred according to species i don't know how many how many of brimstone lays but um you know that there's huge mortality which is sometimes why if if in one year there's suddenly some butterfly becomes very numerous that often indicates that what's happened is that circumstances have greatly favored it and and m many more of them have escaped the birds and other hazards than they usually do so they can bounce up and bounce down in numbers quite quickly the the um the brimstone you can i think this is a picture that um we actually found this brimstone pupa which is an extraordinary thing in in the park um, and ken ken took a photo of it this is some years ago but they're extraordinarily as you can see that pupa it they actually pupate on the bush not all caterpillars do not all caterpillars pupate, pupate where they've eaten their food they often go off somewhere else altogether is this is an ex, this is a very very good camouflage on you know in in among the leaves that's right and yes it looks like a leaf rather than a leek and again it's even got a blimp a little bit of a blemish on it or an orange a sort of maroony looking mark which is quite similar to the maroony mark on the stem of the food plant i notice there the um that one you might wonder how that how that chrysalis is staying there uh, the reason it's staying there is it's anchored at two points first of all at the bottom there's a silken pad which fixes it there and second and i think you can just make it out it girdles it the caterpillar girdles itself with a thread of silk i think michelle had the cursor roughly where it is it that curse that thread of silks attached to the nearest support it goes around the pupa and so the, the pupa is kind of looking as if it's hanging in the air. Not um, all butterflies in the family that that belongs to, which is the whites, uh, they all do that. But in other families, they generally don't. Um, they don't have the girdle. Um, so anyway, you can just see the remark, you know, how the, that everything about that butterfly is hiding from predators, the butterfly, the caterpillar, the chrysalis. Now, I'm, I'm talking a lot about the blimstone because it's such an interesting butterfly. Um, let me just turn over my, prompt, my little prompty notes. Um, one of the remarkable things about them, I mean, they, they have a, well, the brimstone has the longest life of any butterfly in Britain. It, it lives 10 months, poss possibly more and for some individuals. Um, and so they've got a lot of time to do different things that they'll spend more than half of that time asleep but in the spring they, they may come out in late february early march and they'll be around until the middle of june so they've, they've got a lot of time to get on with life and one of the things they do with it is they they're capable of flying and they often do fly very great distances um the females especially will will fly and find buckthorn bushes pretty well you know wherever there are some i i i, I know this and i i went out the other day very close to home onto uh, into shadwell where the school has a little hedge which has a few buckthorn bushes in it and i, I looked at those and and sure enough i found an egg so i know that the female butterfly has been down to shadwell um but what so you you may see the brimstone either the male or the female out anywhere in the borough but you won't do that very often because i think mostly they do stick to the cemetery park now i you might wonder why do they stick to it why don't they just wander out and then never find their way back um that doesn't seem to happen because i i think i don't know i don't know that much about it but there'll be people who know more than i do but I suspect they've got very good navigation skills that they can go out of the park and they can go back. Um, 
as I, I don't see how we could account for keeping such a big population as we do but I think what what holds them there is we've got lots and lots and lots of the food plant of the caterpillars and what what is quite clear is that I mean female butterflies have to be able to to know what their caterpillar food plants are and when they're looking for them when, when the brimstone is looking for them what she does first of all she looks by sight and she's like likely to land on any green bush and if it she can tell through chemical signals that she gets through her feet she can tell um, whether or not it's a suitable plant and if it's not she flies off and keeps looking um, if it is she'll she'll lay an egg or possibly more than one but, um, so she searches by sight and then confirms it with 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 her feet um, but the males the males clearly know the food plants as well because they know that where the food plant is that's where they're likely to be females and they'll often they'll often search the buckthorn bushes because there might be a female on the buckthorn bush i think that's general about male butterflies they too know the caterpillar food plants even though that because that's that helps them to stay where they should stay because if they simply wander off just anywhere that's okay if you're a, a cabbage white and you need you need cabbages or something and it's okay if you're a, a red admiral and you need stinging nettles because you will find those plants everywhere but a lot of the plants that are needed are not found everywhere so you need to you need to stay in a suitable place um right so that caterpillar will become a pupa sometime in june or maybe early july and it will hatch out a few weeks later to be a butterfly and then it'll be around the following spring so that um that's anyway, so that's brimstone i move on i'm going to move on now to something else the next slide here's a slide that says orange tip you might think hang on hang on some mistake here and it hasn't got an orange tip now that's because this is this is a this is a female orange tip i thought it unnecessary to show a picture of a male orange tip because if you see a butterfly with bright orange on the end of the wings it's an orange tip but the um, the female doesn't have it but and when you when you see her flying you if you don't get close you could think she was a cabbage white it just looks like just looks white but when you when you get close she she's different on top and underneath especially underneath if, if you try and before we get to the next slides if you memorize what you see on the top you see this black edge to the wingtip with little white little white bars all the way along and you see one kind of well half moon shaped kind of black spot um, and then you see underneath you see this wonderful pattern the green w which which disguises the orange tip brilliantly on cow parsley or garlic mustard and you also see that that green continues on the the, the upper wings it, it 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 continues at the top of the upper wing now that's because when they settle they, they bring the upper they bring the wings in but that little bit doesn't get brought right in so it it then merges completely with the with the rest of the green and that's general among butterflies you'll off, you'll see that that the tip of the forewing underneath has got the same sort of pattern as the hind wing i read only quite recently that that green is not only is not actually green it, it, it is an optical illusion caused by the combination of black and yellow scales they're not green they're black and they're yellow it's a bit like one of my favorite things that anyone who knows me is probably sick of hearing me say is that there's no such thing as gray hair there isn't there's if, if anyone's got gray hair what they've actually got is a combination of black hairs and white hairs um anyway so that's the orange tip female you you can also see i can you can see the antennae well there you can see that there's a white that is a sort of black antennae which thickens a bit antenna I mean, and has a white tip now, 
often, if, if you're really expert, you can just look at the antennae of a butterfly. And if you, I couldn't do this, but there will be people who can tell you exactly which butterfly it is, just from looking at the antennae, because they're never they're never exactly the same in two different two different species. So you you can also see the kind of fluffiness, a little bit of fluffiness around the butterfly around the bottom. Um, Here's, a, here's the commonest butterfly that you, you'll see, um, the, sm the small white with its wings closed. They, they sometimes rest with their wings closed and they sometimes rest with their wings open. Um, there's a lot of those about at the moment and you, you can see them anywhere. Because um, they, one among other things, they'll eat um, garden cabbages and garden nasturtiums as well as wild relatives of those plants. The, um, so it, if you look at the small white, you, you can, well, what you can see, wings closed again, but sometimes the, the, often the wings will be open when, they, when they're feeding. But what, what you've got is that, cre you know, you've got a white on top and a kind of creamy color underneath. Um, and we won't move on for a while, but this one is a green veined white. And you can see how, you know, very, very pronounced veining. If you look at that veining, you might say, well, it's, it's more black than green, which, which is true. Um, it, it, uh, the reason it's called, been called the green vein white is that there is another butterfly, which is now, has been extinct in Britain for about 100 years, but it's still common enough. It's still quite common in mainland Europe. And it's called the black vein white. It, it really does have, you know, has different types of veining, but it's jet black. So you have to call the green, you can't call that the black vein white. If the black vein white didn't exist, perhaps you could. But um, we've looked at the, those, those would cast back over those last three butterflies. Now, the, the orange tip has got, is the only one of the butterflies that I'm going to show you that can only be seen in the spring. Um, all the others can be seen later in the year as well. But the, the reason the orange tip can only be seen in the spring is that it's got very specific needs for its caterpillars. They don't eat leaves. They, they eat they eat the growing seed pods of certain plants in the cabbage family. Garlic mustard is one and, and Lady smoke or cuckoo flower is another, and there are a few more. But they the eggs are laid just when the plants are in flower. So when the little caterpillar hatches, there's tender little there's tender little seed pods to eat. And as it grows, the seed pod grows, but then the caterpillar's jaws get tougher. And even though the seed pod gets bigger and tougher, the caterpillar can still eat them. And they look like the seed pods. They're long and green like the brimstone caterpillar. So they, they have to feed on that. And those pods are only available in the spring. So if the butterfly bred up and hatched again in the summer, there'd be nothing for the caterpillars to eat. So, so it doesn't. Um, but, but the small white can find food all the year. And so can the green vein white. Um, when, when any of these three that you see on the wing, it's hard, you, you have to sort of see them settle to know which is which. But um, the green vein white doesn't eat garden cabbages. It, it eats wild plants. It eats the leaves of garlic mustard and, and other things um, where the orange tip eats the seed pods. So the leaves of garlic mustard can be found at any time. So it, you can find this butterfly now and then you'll have a bit of a pause in June. And then from July onwards up to September, you'll see them again. And um, those September, those caterpillars that are laid by the late butterflies will turn into a pupa and they'll spend the winter as a pupa and they'll come out as a, in, the, in the spring as a butterfly. So, um, and, and you won't see these, you, you, if, if you see a white, if, if you're not in the park and you're not in a woodland somewhere else and you see a white butterfly, a, little, a small white butterfly, it almost certainly won't, it'll almost certainly be a small white and not this one. But in the cemetery park, much of the time, these are more common than the small white. What we've got here, there's, there's, another, there's another white, which is quite a bit bigger. It's about as big as a brimstone, actually. 
and this is the large white um what i i got ken to pick this one for me because you can tell you you can you can tell the difference between a male and a female brimstone. You can tell the difference between a male and female orange tip. And you can tell the difference between male and female with these whites as well. And, and the way you tell the difference with the large white, the small white and the green vein white is that on the, on the four wings, there are two black spots on the female and there's only one on the male. So this is a female. Um, the, the uh, so the, this one you, you you I've seen a few of these in recent days we've had them in our back garden um, as we've had plenty of small whites and but one of the strange things about them that I don't I don't really understand is that large whites sometimes there's a lot of them in the cemetery park in summer and they they spend a lot of their time at the tops of the trees now, I'm not sure why that is. I can only imagine it because it, there's nothing there's nothing for them up there. There's no food plant up there. Um, but it may be that what happens is that mating takes place up there, that the females go up there and the males follow them. I don't know that for sure, but um, there's lots of mysteries. Anyway, so here, uh, and in fact, interestingly, the, the large white, can be ha quite hard to tell from the female brimstone, but they don't they don't fly in the same way. But the the male brimstones often can't can't tell that. Well, the the, the not the brimstones, the male large whites c often can't tell the difference because in the summertime, when the female brimstones have come out and they're not interested in sex, male male large whites will chase them and harass them until they realise that they're not actually a large white. So they're going, you know, on the visual recognition. Um, but uh, yeah, and the female, the female brimstones don't know what the hell's going on. Right, this is the speckled wood, which you'll see in the park now. You can see how the speckling comes in and the wood comes in from the fact that it likes woodlands. It likes particularly, it likes sunny spots in woodlands. So you, you'll see them in the cemetery park. And th this one, what it does, this is the male of this butterfly is territorial. It, it, it gets a good spot, which is a nice little sunspot in the wood. And it, and it sits there and any, any other speckled, any male speckled wood that comes past is chased off. Any female that um, comes in is, in is, is, is attempted to be enticed. So, and females are, you know, so it's it's getting a good spot where females, you know, you either you either search for the female like all the ones we've seen previously, and so you travel widely, or you stay put according to your kind. So, speckled wood is a caterpillar's feed on different grasses, and it's it's unusual in all our butterflies in being um, in in having two different ways of spending the winter. Some of them winter as caterpillars and some of them winter as pupae. Now, the ones we see now have wintered as caterpillars because, no, they've went, sorry, they've wintered as pupae. So all they've got to do in the spring is hatch out. Whereas the ones that were caterpillars have got to finish eating and then they've got to turn into a pupa. So they don't start coming out until about the middle of May. So but this is a brilliant thing and that if you look at them you'll see they vary a lot some of them the spots are almost white and some of them are a, a deeper yellow than that and one of the things about these spots lots of butterflies have spots like this and when they're like this they're interpreted and, and experience backs it up is that they divert a bird which has seen them it, they divert it from the body the bird will often peck at the eyes and the butterfly escapes with a with a sort of notch in its wing. Right, we come now to the holly blue, which, which you will, this is, there's a lot of these about at the moment, and, and this is the second, if you're just not in the park, but anywhere else in the borough, after the small white, this is the second most likely butterfly you will see. Um, and there's a lot about at the moment. And, 
it, it obviously, it doesn't, it, this is one that can rest with its wings open or its wings closed. Um, these are obviously resting with them open, but one of the reasons for the two of them is the one on the left is a male and the one on the right is a female. The females always have this really pronounced black band on the edge of the forewing and the male, the male only has a, a slight black band. Um, this, uh, the, the underside of this is a kind of silvery blue with little specks on it. Um, the, the, uh, the holly blue spends the winter as a pupa, and then it, then it, then it comes out and um, gets mating, gets laying eggs, lay, lays, legs on, lays eggs on lots of different, quite a lot of different plants, but most of them are shrubs. And the caterpillar is another one that doesn't normally eat leaves. It, it may eat them if it runs out of everything else to eat, um, but it doesn't normally eat leaves. It eats flowers and it eats developing, developing fruits. And in the spring, a lot of them do lay their eggs on holly. Um, not all of them, because they'll lay them on gorse and they'll lay them on dogwood and buckthorn and quite a lot of other things, which is why they, partly why they're so widespread. But when they lay on holly, they, they can't tell which is a male holly bush and which is a female holly bush. So apparently what happens, they've discovered that when eggs are laid on a male holly and there are no little berries to eat, they actually do eat the leaves, that they eat the very youngest leaves before they become prickly. So, um, so that's, that's the holly blue, I think. Um, and it's the only blue that you'll see at the moment. Um, the, the only other blue that you're likely to find in Tower Hamlets is the common blue, which we do have a picture of, I think, later on. Not, it's not that one, but we'll come to it. I, I think it's at the end. Um, the common blue, actually, A, it's, it's, its appearance is quite different. Um, and B, it doesn't come out until at least the middle of May because it spends the winter as a caterpillar. And it does never, it never flies high. It always flies low over grassland. It never flies over a bush or a tree. And these holly blues are always flying over bushes and trees. So, and you're much more likely to see a holly blue. You'll only, you'll see a holly blue anywhere. You'll only see a common blue in the right habitat, which, which is grassland with with clovers and trefoil and lucerne in it or with some of those plants coming to the last four butterflies which all belong to the same family and they're called um the families but they're called nymphalids i don't know why that is i haven't looked that up but there are some people may have seen a peacock this spring i think it seems to me that there are more about than there were Last spring, there were very few. This spring, there seem to be more. Now, they're absolutely brilliant, as you can see. You can see why they're called a peacock. Um, now, the, these, um, these eye spots, they could do two things. One, one, they could, you know, something could peck at them. And, and the other thing is, if these are suddenly flashed at you and you're a bird and the wing, say the butterfly's been there with wings closed and these are flashed at you, you may well be startled and the butterfly makes its escape. So that's another way that you can use markings like this. Um, if you look, you, you can see the very black edges to the wings. Now that the underside is completely black. It's just like burnt wood. And I think w when I was a child, I, I once came across three hibernating peanut peacock butterflies in, in a burnt out oak tree, and they were a perfect match. Um, so that when the when the peacock's wings are closed and it's against the dark background it's very hard to see um now peacocks caterpillars feed on stinging nettles and the eggs are laid in large batches some people may have seen the black caterpillars with white specks all over them that live together in a large group on stinging nettles uh, the, the comma has you can see the very unusual shape of wings. Now, when, when those wings are closed, it's totally different underneath. It's very well camouflaged against sort of a leafy background, especially wintry dead leaves. Um, and it has a little white mark underneath, which is why it gets its name. And that little white mark looks like a little hole in the leaf. Um, it's like the light coming through. But 
the commas the commas shape is very like an oak leaf and commas frequently hibernate on oak trees and they could be taken for a dead leaf by a bird, bird looking for something to eat um the the uh, they they have that their caterpillars don't live like peacock caterpillars. they feed on nettles but they also feed on hops and red currants and possibly elm trees as well but they um they don't um that they, they don't live in big batches they live one by one so um that's a that that's a difference um and they have a slightly complicated life cycle but you can see them all through the summer and if this butterfly in the spring will lay eggs and some of those spring eggs will feed up quickly and produce another lot of butterflies which will have offspring before the summer's over but others will feed up more slowly and they won't have any offspring they'll do like the peacock and the brimstone and they'll wait till the spring so there's a funny mix up there it's a red admiral i think this is one of the most widely known butterflies an amazing pattern when you look at it um and in in april you, you normally i don't normally see very many red admirals in april i see more actually in march usually and then you don't see them again much until the end of may but this year it'd be interesting to know if other people have seen them this year i've seen even though i've not been out very much and i've seen i've seen about three from my back garden and i've seen five or six others elsewhere so we've got a lot of them this april it would appear which may mean that we get uh, many more butterflies than usual in the summer because these will all be the females of all these will be busy laying eggs and so we'll wait and see whether it's going to be a bumper red admiral summer but the the um, red admiral i think always rests but well it, it, it ten, i don't know whether it always does but at least it nearly always rests with its wings open um underneath it's quite you know quite well camouflaged but not not on top um the the red admiral like the comma that the caterpillars the eggs are laid one by one the caterpillars live alone but what they do on the nettle plant is make they they tie leaves together with silk and they make themselves a little tent and they live inside that tent and eat all the eat all the leaves they can and then when they've eaten everything and it's full of droppings they come out and they make themselves another little tent and they eat that and, and until they're finished um and they actually they actually form the pupa inside the tent as well which might give them a bit of extra protection as long as they leave themselves somewhere to get out the the uh, but the red admiral can be seen and has been seen in cemetery park in every single month of the year quite quite a lot the, it used to be thought that they they never hibernated with us and that they always came in in a migration every spring and and it was discovered that certainly a lot a lot do come in in the migration in the spring in fact their descendants many of them it's also been proven leave again and fly south fly south for the winter but quite a lot stay with us but on any really exceptionally nice day in winter when when it's calm and the sun is shining and it's say say nine or ten degrees then a red admiral may well come out and find a the choicest sunniest warmest spot it can and and sit there and bask so you you could see one in every month of the year this is this is the fourth one in this family the small tortoise shell which um used to be a very common butterfly everywhere um it, it uh, certainly in london it, it the last 20 years it's been pretty scarce i i only expect to see a handful every, every year um the the um this is another yet another nettle feeder and hibernator so when they wake up in the spring it's mating time find the nettles lay the eggs in in a big batch and the caterpillars feed together like peacock caterpillars although interestingly they 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 vary more in color than peacock caterpillars do some are some are quite light with a lot of yellow on them and some are quite dark whereas the peacock caterpillars all look the same once that the caterpillars now will feed up and 
emerge and mate and produce another generation, but that second gen, that next generation won't mate and it'll hibernate till the spring. The last picture, this is from Ken, because um, I asked him if he could find any pictures of mating. It's quite, this is a characteristic pose of mating butterflies. 